Okay, so now we're recording. Um, so I guess let's start with your names. Mm. Okay, my name is Rainer. Yeah. And you are? And I'm Toby. <laughs> okay, Toby and Rainer. Yeah. How, sorry, how do, you, how do you spell that? Uh, R-A-E-N-E-R. Oh, okay, right. I had a different spelling in my head. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, and, and you guys are with the Privatsphäre Bundnis. Um, yeah, Bundnis, Bundnis Privatsphäre Leipzig. Oh, okay. Bundnis Privatsphäre. For Privacy Leipzig. <laughs> privacy Leipzig for English, yes. Right, right. right. And how, how did this start? Could you tell me about it? Okay. Oh, that's Toby's term. <laughs> okay. Um, so our group formed right after the protests uh, of the, uh, that came up in Leipzig and other towns in Germany uh, after the Snowden revelations and in the wake of the Snowden revelations, I would say. And so the, the group formed uh, of a bunch of people and we started meeting right behind the Gewandhaus, which is a concert hall in Leipzig. And then we decided to meet uh, meet further to to develop and to um, deal with the topic of of, um, of surveillance, democracy, and um, and the the whole topic of, of the human rights and especially privacy and and though this group started to meet in the university and then we. Um, planned our first um, um, acti activi activity on the, on, on the streets and we um, um, had uh, uh, some, some sort of um, street theater in mind where we bought all, or not bought, but lent and, um, and searched for this old um, non-electric typewriters and then we um, we um, 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 dressed like agents <laughs> and then uh, um, started to protocol all the people on the streets and um, then uh, all these um, young people and children c came to see these old typewriters and are very surprised and though we didn't plan to for this effect, but it uh, really got uh, some uh, uh, attention, and some some local news uh, newspapers or street magazine um, wrote an article about this, and this is how Rainer and other people came to uh, to our group and joined our work, yeah. and the the then the um, old founders of the group um, um, disappeared. Um, <laughs> Uh, slowly from our group so and we started to think about it and then uh, started to meet here in Sublab and Sublab turned uh, into our operation per basis yeah. really soon and then we decided to um, develop crypto parties and get away from the street actions and moved more to um, um, uh, educational stuff and um, also some networking stuff, so we um, um, to, um, started to um, connect to other groups in Germany, um, so in, especially in Cologne and, and Berlin. But um, over the time, the, the connections and the groups there over all are shrinked to one pe one 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 guys. <laughs> So one guy is left in in Berlin and another one in uh, in Cologne. So we are now <laughs> on our own, I guess. But um, we are uh, focusing more on Leipzig right now and try to to um, raise awareness for the topic of privacy and uh, privacy in the times in the digital age, especially, and um, the other. And and uh, of course the economical consequences of of data collection and data analy analysis and so on. Okay, and it's 
an especially economical driven uh, think uh, that uh, data will be uh, merged and um, analyzed to get profiles from people uh, to sell them different things and know about them uh, more deeply than ever before. Yes. That's uh, uh, kind of, of our concern. Yes. Um, the, 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 kind of profiling and um, there's also uh, we have also in mind the uh, uh, collaboration between uh, private sector and public sector um, because uh, there is kind of political and, and uh, privacy security complex maybe it could be called like this mm -hmm. Um, right, so for me there's a lot to take in at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'd like to go back first of all to, to how you guys started. Um, so you were saying that it, it was in the aftermath of the Snowden revelations. Yes. And um, after that, immediately after that, uh, who came up with the idea to gather people to talk about this? Um, so um, I guess I'm not I'm not uh, into the protests in Leipzig at the first time. So I heard about it, and I um, was um, very um, keen on um, uh, on all the newspaper articles and TV re uh, reports and so on at the time. But um, I guess the protests started in, in um, on the same time in. Uh, in, in the USA and, and called uh, under the label stop watching us and so this um, kind of protest under this label or hashtag moved to um, to Germany as well yeah. and it, it was um, and the protest firmed also under under this label in, in, um, in Leipzig and um, uh, the, the first time there's a very eager Political figure, local political figure, active in this kind of protest. So, we um, had about a year something uh, protests against uh, the ACTA law, which was a uh, very complex European law which contains um, copyrights and, and this stuff and there are uh, very large protests here in Leipzig with hundreds and hundreds of people and um, so I guess the, the pro protest uh, potential gathered from this first um, protest waves before the Snowden revelations and um, we also had some minor groups here in Leipzig um, on the top on, 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 on similar topics about camera surveillance uh, or CCTV and um, and of course a very small group about uh, the German law called Vorratsdatensprechung. Um, I don't know the English term <laughs> they are gathering uh, metadata especially and use them to to know, uh, to, to, to get social graphs and such things, mm -hmm. and so, and and to to hand this uh, the, the results over to the police and and uh, secret services and so on, so like Verfassungsschutz. But <clears throat> but though the the, the protest um, at this time um, find uh, resonance. Because it was all the time in the media, and, and you could read every every day, you could read something about uh, the Snowden files in, inter in the internet, or there's some um, our topics, in, 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 even in, in TV and news. So I think it was quite new and uh, also astonishing to a lot of people. Yes. Uh, 
so so they were really concerned about but but uh, that not uh, was not in the not in the long run yes. that's a little bit uh, irritating i think um, because uh, there has nearly nothing changed um, a lot of practice um, from from the um, the kind of surveillance hasn't hasn't really changed. Uh, the intelligence services uh, are working the same way as it did before. Yeah. But now a lot of the things they did and uh, that were uh, at least questioned uh, now are legalized. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, amazing in one way and 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 irritating in another. Um, that uh, that all. What came up with the Snowden revelations uh, and was thought a bad thing is now uh, becoming normal. Yes, it's business as usual. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so you it was you, uh, sorry, it was used like uh, like a blueprint mainly. Mm. Oh, what do you mean blueprint? Um, if the Americans can do this, we in Germany can also do this. That's, that was uh, the, the idea behind, or, or that's, uh, that's what we see in legislation today. And, yeah, and we already find out about uh, in the uh, started a, a, a public um, public um, a commission a Untersuchungsausschuss from uh, when the when this, uh, Involvement with the BND and the, the NSA came up and, and got public. So and and then we learned a lot uh, about the, a lot more about the cooperation between um, the German Secret Service BND and, and the American uh, Secret Service um, or Intelligence Service NSA and 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 as like Reiner said, uh, much of the. Um, Practices they are already doing are extended to to uh, to um, nearly to that what uh, what in USA is already um, business as usual as, as business as usual as you said and yeah. um, that's a bit um, uh, astonishing so and and nobody um, and is in, I guess some. Some part of the, the German public um, gave up on maybe yeah because it's not longer on their interest and so we try to on the other hand we try to to raise awareness about about this topic and um, the problems that all this uh, sh um, side effects that can arise. When you are um, connected all the time. Mm. Okay, so you mentioned ACTA, mm -hmm. and then I think subsequently there was also protests uh, across the world about SOPA and PIPA. Yes, yeah. Was were the protests happening here in Leipzig as well for these other acts? And yes. Then the TPP. Yes, also. Uh, the TPP, for example, uh, is, is a huge topic, and uh, there were a lot, many, I would say, demonstrations mm -hmm. there in Leipzig too. Uh, but these are <laughs> different topics. Mm -hmm. There are um, a lot of special interest groups, I would say, mm -hmm. um, who work on, on, for example, TPP, for example, surveillance, for example, privacy issues, and so on. And uh, the, the problem is um, that they really seldom uh, work united. That's not really easy, and we, we do not have till now a clue how to, how to get people from, from different uh, groups together. Because that would be necessary, I think. In the long run, if you want really to have a change in society and in thinking about uh, these kind of problems, 
So do these separate groups working on these separate issues, uh, do they meet in Sublab as well or are they... No, as far as I know not. No. no. So the TTP group is connected with another German-wide or European-wide um, organization um, who started to um, criticize um, in transparency in, 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 um, um, tax, tax laws and so on. Yeah. And um, they are mainly, uh, and the people here in Leipzig that are focused on this um, agreement are, um, are concerned about um, mainly on, on, on the social social problems that could arise with these agreements. So the side effects of um, um, some um, laws that affect uh, work, labor, and um, and so on. Yeah, and, and also culture, yeah. for example. Yes. Uh, I've just heard about that um, the that the theater, uh, theaters um, that in Germany are really uh, special traded, uh, that they maybe become problems uh, to get their financial ground because uh, if a foreign company for example comes and also started a theater here they can say uh, we do the same work so uh, you have to find us too mm. and that's that's quite difficult because uh, it's a uh, so named Stadttheater in Germany has a really long tradition and it is uh, mainly uh, public, pub, public financed mm -hmm. and uh, that would one part of the things that had to be changed uh, by the uh, by TPP mm -hmm. that's that's uh, just one just one thing mm. and you mentioned PIPA and SOPA um, I guess um, I didn't know if there were protests or demonstrations here right, for these topics in, in Leipzig, but um, uh, in the German internet, um, it, it was back then. It was a time when Facebook wasn't that large, <laughs> and, and and Twitter as well, so and didn't consume the the, the main internet users. So mm -hmm. you had um, back then you had uh, a lot of blogs, web blogs that uh, criticize these uh, agreements and, and, and laws and, and then um, uh, I guess the, the US protest against these laws um, was a good warm-up for U European peoples when ACTA came along, the ACTA, and, um, and then yeah, we had, um, we had back then all um, also some active groups from anonymous anonymous collective and um, anonymous collective went uh, then back to her, their roots now uh, and, and criticizing or protesting against Scientology and the few groups that are active and back uh, at the actor time there are a lot of um, anonymous activists that uh, are involved in the protest and and getting it in, into onto people and um, yeah, we all also had one one guy in our group who um, started um, static activism at uh, in a small cell of anonymous and then came to us and joined us, but he's um, gone now. So, so our group is formed from very. Uh, various people I guess but makes it very interesting and r which is really good I think because our topic is, is a topic that does not end and you can't really set um, easily some lines and say across this line we your, this is your topic and then this is our topic and that's also the problem that Rainer mentioned and we all we face um, usually um, the um, uh, the the that other groups are um, are 
not so concerned about data protection and privacy and say that's your topic and we have our topic and um, say we, we became some some kind of um, placeholder or yeah. for for the, the topic uh, or what's another so hey guys it's good that it is your topic yes <laughs> uh, thank you for for working on this uh, but we will not uh, think about it yes that's uh, that's often heard uh, by us that's quite an interesting sort of, uh, thing to note because I, I would have thought that all these issues are kind of intersectional yeah um, I think so mm, okay. so this is um, because in, in, uh, in uh, German law tradition and the German uh, interpreta current interpretation of our constitution privacy is a very um, strong and deeply connected um, right human right mm. and is deeply connected with all other human rights and and so um, and of course uh, because of the historical background and um, with um, totalitarianism yeah. <laughs> here we uh, there are a lot of people that I usually have privacy in mind so back then and uh, back in the 80s in the BRD the, the West West Germany we had a large protest against um, um, census state census because the the people back then are very concerned that data that the state could collect too much data so the uh, privacy uh, right of to privacy is hurt, has uh, been hurt and then uh, we uh, had um, a decision by the German um, constitutional court that decided uh, the right um, we call um, informationelle Selbstbestimmung, which means um, the right that um, everybody can decide about uh, the, the, the way and the kind his data is being given to others, treated by others, stored and produced, used, used and, yeah. and analyzed or processed by others. So um, from this side, I guess um, if you if you have a, a view on it um, from human human uh, rights perspective and the German German tradition of interpretation uh, interpretation of these uh, to topics, um, it's um, a, t a topic that is connected to all uh, or a lot of fields. But uh, as Reiner already mentioned, we also have the economic. Uh, part in our mind and we are usually very interested in uh, um, well, the to uh, uh, term or topic that call is called um, surveillance capitalism and uh, uh, it's a term that is, has been coined by uh, an American economist and it, I guess it's one of the first ways to describe how the how the economical dynamics and the economical inner logic of the uh, large internet companies works and how they can um, generate so much um, ca capital um, in so short times by using so uh, so uh, um, uh, so small group so a small group of people of employees. So, when you look at Google or Facebook, which are really large companies, and then the, the uh, you came back to the problem of power, uh, because we guess that if you have um, too much information about uh, the, the society, and can uh, and start to to um, analyze the data, and then. Um, um, start to uh, sell the, the the profiles and the information you gathered as a narrative of reality 
and uh, society starts to believe, okay, this data collection and analysis is, is the reality. You didn't, you have the problem that, um, that uh, or the conflict with um, uh, our understanding of enlightenment or what enlightenment brought us the right um, um, to um, um, decide and um, decide about your life to um, to make your own decisions and the right the fundamental right to um, to express yourself to um, and to be yourself so that's our main concern that building such ma so much uh, interested in this collection of data and analysis by um, either the state or this uh, companies in we are uh, using uh, losing uh, bits and bits of our um, um, freedom and freedom in a way of um, autonomy so so and I guess from that perspective uh, we should have uh, a lot of connections to other groups but um, I guess it's we have to do a lot of more of awareness, awareness rising to um, to explain uh, this perspective to others and uh, to convince them that it's a, a topic that's worth that is worth to think about it. Okay. Um, so to go back to the formation mm -hmm. of uh, this group. Um, so you guys started immediately, kind of immediately after mm -hmm. the Snowden Rev revelations. I yeah. can't remember exactly which year that was, uh, 2010, 11? 13. 13, I think. Oh, that's quite weird. Right. 2013. And uh, across the last three years, then, uh, has, um, has the group grown more popular? Have more people started to come? H how has it developed? Now we are 13, 13, members. 13 members, I think. Um, that's really small. <laughs> um, if you have the, the topic in mind that we try to, to work on and uh, to get the people's intention to. Um, yes. On the, on the other hand, uh, at least we are 13 people. Yes. <laughs> um, we started um, to together as uh, not formal uh, connection from between people, and now we are uh, so named fine. Um, that's a, a, a more formalized uh, connection between, between, between and registered by um, and it's re registered by the court and, and so on. Uh, Mainly, mainly for tax reasons <laughs> and for for the reason uh, that we can uh, get maybe we can get some money from uh, from other uh, bigger foundations. Foundations, for example, mm -hmm. that that is needed to be registered by the court mm -hmm. to get such uh, such funding. And we uh, had to um, uh, write down a formal document which serves as a kind of constitutional document where um, some um, um, group decisions uh, um, processes has been described and, and so on. And um, in a way it's uh, kind of uh, formalizing the uh, democracy, demo dem in a democratic or the democratic Democratic? democratic process in, in inside in our group. group yeah. So and our one of our main um, topics was to um, either provide um, uh, such uh, amount of information that every member of the group can um, uh, click into some decisions that we are current currently may ha have to have to make. And uh, on the other hand, to um, to um, let uh, or be open for for all um, 
inputs and um, decisions and and directions that came from the group. So this is a democracy um, basis of our group, and it part of it has been written down into this document. Mm. So from this uh, institutional <coughs> kind of view, our group developed. We also de developed into um, getting better in, in, net, in networking stuff and, and deciding when it's uh, worth to join some um, act activities other groups started or not. We're trying to get some money from other foundations um, to um, set our group on a more stable f ground. So, because we print uh, um, handouts and flyers and s stuff like that to promote our um, um, projects and um, crypto parties and so on, yeah. and reading, public readings we're doing, and we developed a uh, small set of um, um, like crypto parties and open readings and so on and yes that's uh, that's on the the good side <laughs> but we uh, as i already mentioned we um we also lost lost <laughs> some people mm -hmm. um, and um, we decided to go to other um, topics like refugees and, and so on or Mm. or get uh, some of them are, get, uh, uh, founded families and got children and then there's no time left to uh, for our uh, work here so I guess that's normal yeah certainly uh, there could be more people that's yeah. uh, that's the point uh, it's yeah. it's a lot of work and it's a lot of work more to be done yes um, and we have a really small basis of, of people who work on it on a regular basis. Yes. So maybe so three and a half are, are, um, have all the weight of, from, from the work on, on their shoulders. So that's, uh, that's, really, uh, that's really tough sometimes, uh, especially if, uh, if there are some events like uh, CryptoCon or things like that. Um, because there, there, there is a lot to organize, uh, but not only uh, there are also things to be done. Uh, you, you look around and you will see uh, that um, there is also sometimes a hand needed. And uh, so it sometimes goes a little bit uh, too much up. Yes, yes of course. So if you um, start that uh, right after the Snowden revelations where nearly 500 people are on the streets and protesting against it. Yeah. And you um, see how um, small uh, the group at the end <laughs> after three years got. It's, uh, I didn't, wouldn't say it's disappointing, but it's really um, interesting to see that uh, this potential of, of protest didn't um, uh, find a way to um, crystallize in a way in, in our group and our work maybe it's a problem of us maybe uh, maybe there are other topics uh, which are much more public interest i don't know but we are as, as i already said we are yeah, in our networking work we realize that uh, it's not a problem a local problem so the other groups in Cologne or uh, Berlin or other cities yeah. uh, where are similar groups uh, or similar groups have been formed over time and they um, shrinked or uh, uh, extinct yeah so, had already gone oh, um, there were also a lot some former groups in Leipzig and yeah. they do not exist anymore mm -hmm. They had uh, topics nearly connected to our topic now, so. But 
Hmm. Nobody from from these groups ever came to ask. Uh, oh, it's nice. Let's start, uh, from, and then we will bring in what we have done uh, till till now. Hmm. So, the people who come to um, the events, are they yeah. mainly members or are they members of the general public? It's, uh, it's more general public, yes. I would say. Yes. Um, they are, as I told, uh, we are only a small active group of members okay. and uh, so it is mainly uh, general public. Mm. How do people hear about your events? <sighs> it's quite different, I would say. Uh, sometimes we uh, get the opportunity to have uh, interviews in radio. For example, on Mephisto 96, it's a student's radio here in Leipzig. Um, and Radio Blue, also Radio Blau in Deutsch. It's also, uh, it's also a small radio for, uh, from, made from the civil society. Um, and they are they're from people get sometimes the information. Then we uh, give out uh, flyers we produce uh, and posters, um, especially at, at uh, students' location or at locations where a lot of students uh, are around. Oh, and and also so in, in university and, and a lot of clubs in Leipzig. Clubs uh, and, and some social... Um, social groups with social, social centers, centers yeah. and then we do a little um, social media work from Facebook and Twitter yeah. to inform people uh, following us and also we inform uh, local news newspapers and media uh, groups on a regular basis uh, mm. always short before we start uh, for example crypto parties and other things uh, so Sometimes uh, they write articles about uh, the coming events, mm -hmm. so that helps definitely. And, and the larger events, um, the, especially the CryptoCon, yeah. uh, got a lot more attention. And um, I guess in, in Leipzig, uh, it's inter interesting to see that when your events. Um, um, are set on a regular basis and um, over time you can see that the local media um, got interested in it or got its interest in it and um, and so we have that connection and so the, the especially the crypto party we can say that the um, the people that came, came along here are from are very uh, heterogeneous groups. Uh, so we have elderly people, we have uh, uh, women and men. So it doesn't um, isn't uh, set on uh, any gender basis or so. We had uh, students, we have um, mothers, we have already had children here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, then uh, we uh, publish all, all of our materials, the slides, and uh, an article we write um, with further explanation on our website or blog. And then um, we had um, uh, the luck, and or, or we're lucky, some uh, teachers of uh, local schools uh, found that on the internet, and then they write us emails and ask oh, can, couldn't you come along and make a, a, a crypto party on our school and so we had the opportunity to do a crypto party on a school twice which was very interesting to connect to students uh, in, in their teens so yeah. mm -hmm. and to hear what, what uh, apps on smartphones they are using to communicate and so to fit our um, educational ground and uh, the educational structure of our par crypto parties better on their, ban on their needs of our younger people. And um, then we do the readings, uh, public yeah. readings, where we invent a uh, actor who can read, <laughs> can read in a in a 
ple pleasant way. So in a professional manner. Professional manner. Yeah, yes, of that's, course. Uh, that's, uh, we can't really do that, <laughs> or maybe could do that, but uh, so and um, unfortunately for, uh, for the for the readings. Yeah. What do they read? Oh, we used uh, we used books from Ka Kafka. From Kafka. Um, to have an uh, to have an, uh, an picture how how it influences people uh, if they are surveil under surveillance or if they think they are under surveillance, yes. um, how will it affect them? How will they uh, react to to this? Uh, what their what their guesses about about uh, things around them? And only from from the from the. Uh, from the situation that they think they are under surveillance, they are not really. But uh, but it's an, it's an imagination in, in, in that text uh, that they are under surveillance, and it's interesting how they uh, how they um, react to, to the situation. Okay, then we had um, some. Um the so circle. We the used circle also, we used uh, a small a small part from the circle. It's um, kind of. Um, Future, future sky feel, sky feel like yeah. novels, but but it's very close to our current time and could happen uh, there in, in some internet uh, company. And then we had um, st um, texts from scientists uh, on the field of surveillance studies. <laughs> also, we had <laughs> also we had texts from from. Uh, Bruce Steyer, who's an expert in the crypto cryptographic field, and he um, um, writes uh, about um, the um, yeah, the problems that could arise of, about, uh, from surveillance for the public and the society. So, yeah, it's mainly the and, and we had a, a small set of texts that are from journalists right uh, right after the Snowden revelations or in the wake of the Snowden revelations who try to figure the uh, the impact of democracy and privacy out and, and then after, after the readings we uh, start to have discussions with the um, visitors or the yeah. and um, the first two readings, uh, the discussion are uh, focused mainly on our people, or our groups, and, and then and the last, um, uh, the last discussion, uh, the the, uh, the discussion um, was much more open and uh, visitors bring them in and. Was really interesting. Yeah, to, to to hear about their perspectives yes. and about their their thoughts about the surveillance and how they are affected from this and, and so on. But um, I have to admit that not that only a few people came along to this um, event. So the readings aren't the kind of events that um, bring people in <laughs> right now. So we are uh, currently um, deciding how to d uh, to, um, to go on with this kind of event in the, the future, but we plan to to start a next reading in, in, uh, uh, in late fall, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. we see. We also try to um, uh, to deal with the topic in cinema. So here, right. Uh, so, uh, uh, so right here is the Cinedink Cinema, and we um, had uh, a long, uh, a long session of movies dealing with uh, surveillance and so on. Okay. Come okay. close the window, which will yeah. be very noisy. Yeah. Okay. So just give me ten seconds. We need a hammer to close the window here. Yeah.
It's okay. Uh, it, there were some problems uh, with the windows were not uh, fixed, mm -hmm. oh. and they they get smashed. Uh, you can see it in, the, in that room there, over there. Oh. That's uh, that's not funny because uh, the sheds fell down from the fourth floor to the ground, and we were lucky that no one uh, no one got get, uh, got hurt. Mm -hmm. It's some some time ago, but so uh, the people are concerned about concerned it. about it and look after it if the weather turns. <laughs> yeah. So we were um, at uh, the, the long movie night. Yeah, long movie night. And yeah, um, it was quite interesting to see that um, a lot a uh, small group of people come. To this movie night, and um, the, the the people joined at different times and yes. different movies. We found we we um, um, you know planned for the night, and then we um, showed together with Sublab sh showed um, um, Citizen Four the documentary on the um, on the CryptoCon last year, which was. Uh, a, a, a re really a success because uh, the, the cinema was <laughs> uh, there was no place left and what that was very interesting and this year we um, showed um, a documentary about Aaron Swartz um, it was okay wasn't so much interest than uh, the, the year before but it, uh, I was surprised uh, well, I, I thought that there were about 20 people 20. I think and uh, that's uh, not that bad mm -hmm. um, if you have in mind that it was in late uh, late May and uh, the first really warm and, and sunny days so certainly people are a lot Round in Leipzig, yeah. and um, so I think it was. It wasn't that bad. Yes, mm. that was the internet's own boy. Internet's yeah. own boy. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Oh. yeah, yes. I had that screen in Singapore. Too. Okay. okay. Mm. Yeah. So, so we try to to figure out what kind of event um, connects to the people, and we can. Um, Transport the, the ideas or the problems um, we see on this, uh, that surveillance brings with us and data data collection and, and um, violations of privacy and so on. So that is another uh, attempt of our group to to bring this into the or the, the topic under the people. So. We also try to um, another from street theater we, we, where we um, dressed like agents with uh, large hats and sunglasses and so, and, and they trying to record the, with the fake cameras and fake um, recorders and uh, voice recorders and uh, running around the people on the streets and try to follow them and together but it does not uh, um, uh, have any impact on the people so we couldn't um, um, connect to the success uh, this type typewriter um, stuff um, did so we didn't try it uh, Another time to with the streets tee up theater sing, but we also we all we have that in mind. But with um, three and a half people, you can't so you easily can't, you can't really do that much. <laughs> mm -hmm. So next half of year, we have a lot of um, inquiries for um, um, sessions and, and, and talks. So. We, Topics about privacy and, and smart city, which is uh, what we're seeing in Leipzig right now. Yeah, it starts to become uh, an important topic because 
their the SM project um, together with the EU. Uh, they uh, tried to make the Leipziger Westen, the west of Leipzig, uh, to, uh, to a pilot project. And uh, we were asked to, to join and uh, to have some thoughts about it and some discussions. And now we are on a point uh, to write an overall paper about this and uh, how we see that smart city should be handled uh, in connection to development of the city of Leipzig. Mm -hmm. And of course, to uh, from the perspective of data protection and yeah. privacy and but um, there are also some ideas from the other group who joined uh, writing this text uh, about um, share, share economics and um, share economics yeah. and, and so on. Mm -hmm. We will see where this will go and brings us. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So this is the triangulum project, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so there's, there's been, I've, I've visited a website of the Triangulum project and um, for what it says about Leipzig, there's, there's not really that much. It says that there's been a public consultation and that the experts and the public have been invited to give their yeah. views and things like that. So uh, I guess for me, I'm, I'm really curious, do you, I, I suppose you were in this consultation, so would, would you say that this consultation was um, truly consultative with the public were was the public adequately mm -hmm. adequately uh, represented we weren't in that consultation still now uh, we we came to the or we were invited by the by the other group who were in the consultations and they found it a little bit fishy so they asked us uh, what we would think about uh, all, uh, this topic at all um, so we we uh, we started after after the last consultations for the for the first period I think uh, were closed, but we have heard that in um, I think September the next consultations and public uh, invitations uh, to to be part of this discussion process will start. So we really hope uh, to be invited and uh, to be part of it and. Uh, I had a short telephone call to someone from the city who was uh, in charge of, uh, of the project and they told uh, we don't want to do so much with, uh, with IT in that project. Uh, it's mainly that uh, some, some uh, firms owned by the city uh, will more involved in this and they will develop uh, uh, develop some some things for for better environment treatment and and so on. Um, so we do not really have a have a clue what uh, what this pro project is up to. I only know they will start in 1970 uh, to fill some forms uh, to get money from the project <laughs> and. Uh, it's not really clear till now uh, which uh, uh, on, on which base this will start. We will see, and we hope we hope we we uh, we can have some influence. Yes, and of course, um, as you can see uh, or guess, uh, what Ryan already mentioned is uh, it's also a struggle to get uh, to get more information, a struggle of transparency, and and of of course. It seems we didn't know very well or didn't know it at any point that um, that uh, the direction of this process and, and, and the pro project itself in Leipzig isn't very clear right now. So uh, it seems to be that the, the city or the, the participants uh, from, from the from local, local participants didn't really know what they want to do right now so maybe data protection mm -hmm. is a topic here i guess it should be uh, should be discussed at least mm -hmm. to bring it on the table and to um, let it uh, let the some some sort of um, 
discourse start and circulate in the, the mind of the public, uh, public, um, and the, the authorities here. But I didn't know, and uh, we already heard uh, from the other group who brings us in then uh, that they already addressed the, the theme of data protection in the first meeting. Mm. And uh, it, uh, uh, as they told us, was very surprising because the moderator didn't want to talk about data protection and privacy. So we are really interested what uh, will come, comes next and we try to get the, our text ready until then and uh, to hand it over yeah. so they could at least um, have uh, uh, our, our point of view written down and uh, the other group wants to, to share the the text with other groups who are uh, into um, um, house housing and renting problems and, and, and so on. So we will see. So um, they told us that um, a lot of of local groups who are dealing with um, problems of um, living and rent and, and, and so on are um, eager to get some information about smart city because um, there's not so much ra around and we are starting to read um, some scientific papers or political yeah. texts about it to get um, more information because the term itself is very uh, unclear and not um, um, developed Right. It's not really uh, uh, there's not really a definition uh, no. to it. Um, it started maybe uh, with, with the midterm of the Clinton administration. There was the term first used, um, and from then um, the, there are di extremely different views on on, on, the, on the definition. Also, uh, between um, scientists who, who worked on, 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 on the definition of this of this term. Yeah. On one hand, it is uh, it is all somehow connected to information technology. Yes. On the other hand, uh, I do not know where it was. Uh, there were some sheep going uh, through some uh, some weeds, and that that was also. <laughs> somehow connected to smart city nobody really knows why and and how and so so it is it's extremely extremely broad yeah, uh, the, broad. What, what what different uh, people understand yes from that term and of course in the european field or european um, discussions the smart city the term smart city means something different to the, the, uh, the city development we have in Asia where they have this met large, large metropoles and uh, um, here in Europe I guess they try to fit um, fit the term into the, uh, the very complex process of city development in, on these very old cities and and you have uh, all structures of cities, and of course the, the problem that um, European there are only a few European large metropoles, and uh, mm. Europe is uh, uh, com compared to Asia, for example, not a, not a, an area where uh, so much large cities are. So there are. So so the structure is much more rural, I guess. So, uh, and I could not imagine how you want how to how to um, implement uh, smart cities on small towns with a few thousand people. So we will see. Yeah, mm. I haven't really heard of a lot of people in Leipzig talking about the smart city um, and. When, when I ask people about it, some actually kind of a number of people said, Oh, I've never heard about this. Mm -hmm. So, would you say that 
maybe my sample size is too small, but would, would you say that most people uh, are uh, most people know that this is going to happen here? No, no, no. I do not really think so. Um, uh, the information is public on the website, as you have seen, um, but um, I think it, it never reached the public, uh, really, because nobody uh, lobbied uh, to, to get the public known uh, to, to this topic. Mm -hmm. Of course. And therefore, therefore, only a small, small bunch of people, maybe you can call them activists, know about uh, the problem because they are always uh, concerned about uh, living in their in their small uh, in their small parts of the city and, and they are at least sometimes um, concerned because they uh, do professional work on housing on rent uh, projects on, 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 on uh, developing uh, of building projects and so on mm -hmm. and and these, these, as far as I see, uh, the people who are uh, aware of uh, of the smart city project that that it will take place there in Leipzig. Okay. Yes, and, and I guess um, um, it's uh, a part of our job to uh, to um, to ra raise the awareness for this topic and the project that is going on. But um, first of all, we have to understand. What's going on, and, <laughs> and have to have to develop our own thoughts, write it down, and, and if this so-called manifesto is written down, we have um, built the first uh, steps on the way down, and we will see if uh, how the project gets along, and 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 how we can uh, can then concentrate on. Uh, um, talk about it and to erase the awareness and we are trying we are currently planning to to develop some talks about it uh, on uh, some uh, events uh, outside of Leipzig and so we will see if we can uh, can uh, repeat these talks and invite people here to to get uh, into it and uh, we had the chance uh, on the, the crypto con to talk to um, a small group of people who were there and didn't heard about um, triangulum or smart city leipzig or so on and they were very interested so i guess uh, interested is there but uh, it has to be uh, um, uh, to taken from the ground and to lift up. <laughs> so, and I think it's it's really not publicly known. Mm -hmm. That's that's the main point. And yeah, there are always a lot of projects going on uh, <laughs> that that are kind of public because they are published on, on, on some websites, um, but uh, but people are not aware. Okay. That uh, what's what's going on, yeah. and um, you can't. You can't not not. Uh, you cannot think that people are aware of them because uh, uh, they they don't have. The time and mm -hmm. and, and, and the and, and the power. Uh, Always to read through uh, through the documents. many many documents. Yeah. So I guess it's um, up to some local groups to um, pro um, um, promote this information. Uh, you can look it up there, and we um, built some abstracts or some summaries from these documents and. Uh, you can look here. We find this problematic. What do you think about it? And, and, and yeah, you need uh, need some groups to to that build uh, this course yeah. and, uh, and and to 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 um, spread this discourse over the, the local area where it uh, should uh, should um, circulate. But and and at this time the local media isn't very interesting and also not aware of this project because um, 
I guess so yeah. we'll, uh, we'll say you don't see the interest or the public interest in it right now. But it, uh, we hope to, uh, to change it a bit. <laughs> I think the point is that uh, that the uh, city of Leipzig do not really has a, has a clear plan till now uh, how, how they will uh, chose uh, the different projects and how how they will, um, will treat them in, in the end and, and, and find and, fi and, and make a final decision which projects will be uh, will be part of the triangular project mm -hmm. in the end. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not clear as far as I can say from from all I've heard what I've heard and seen around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we hope it will change in the next half year. Mm. Must <laughs> if they want to start really to uh, to write uh, some papers uh, to get money on the beginning of twenty seventeen, then they must go ahead. Of course, yeah, I'm sure they have to. <laughs> And I'm sure they will. Yeah. And so we have to get our texts out and to start to spread it or to spread the topic in the public or to the people we have a chance to meet. Because our uh, we, uh, we are not that uh, <laughs> Uh, that much, no, that big, that big to, to, uh, yeah. to get to so much people. Yeah. Mm. But maybe we can interest uh, some media for this, uh, or some some alternative media in, in Leipzig, and mm. so it will get on momentum, so to say. Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. 